Stiffer aftermarket sway bars are a very popular mod for 79-04 solid rear axle Mustangs, especially among people who autocross their ponies. Aftermarket sway bars are always advertised the same way. They improve the handling of your Mustang. But because aftermarket companies don't differentiate between driving on the street, on an autocross course, or on a racetrack, many people show up to their first autocross event with the wrong sway bars on their Mustangs. When it comes to choosing sway bars for your 79-04 solid rear axle Mustang autocross car, stiffer isn't always better. Sway bars are an incredibly important and often misunderstood mod. They're a simple part that plays a complex role in your suspension setup. This video provides basic information about what sway bars do and how sway bars impact the handling of your Mustang. I'll also cover why you might have the wrong sway bar or sway bars on your car and share some tips about how to choose the right sway bar or sway bars for the 79-04 solid rear axle Mustang you're autocrossing. I'm going to focus on sway bars that mount in the OEM locations. When you turn right, the car's body rolls left and loads the suspension on the left side, while unloading the suspension on the right side. That reduces grip on the right side. A sway bar, also called an anti-roll bar, limits body roll by transferring the load from one side of the car to the other. With the forces distributed more evenly, the car stays flatter through the turn and has more lateral grip. Sway bars are also used to fine-tune understeer and oversteer, which is extremely important when you're trying to get your Mustang to handle its best. There are several key things to know about sway bars. Sway bars work with your other suspension components as part of a system. When choosing sway bars, you have to consider your suspension as a whole, not just front or rear. Stiffer sway bars limit suspension travel. Many people switch to stiffer sway bars because they want to completely eliminate body roll. But a little body roll isn't a bad thing as long as it's controlled and composed. You need your suspension to articulate out on course. For autocross, it's helpful to think about sway bars in terms of understeer and oversteer. Understeer is when you turn the steering wheel and the car turns less than you want it to. The front tires lose grip before the rear tires lose grip. Oversteer is when you turn the steering wheel and the car turns more than you want it to. The rear tires lose grip before the front tires lose grip. Some drivers like a little oversteer, some like a little understeer, but many drivers want their Mustang's handling to be neutral. Neutral handling means the car loses grip in the front and rear at the same time. Knowing how sway bars impact handling will help you dial in your Mustang's manners out on course. All other things being equal, a stiffer front sway bar adds understeer and reduces oversteer. A softer front sway bar reduces understeer and adds oversteer. A stiffer rear sway bar adds oversteer and reduces understeer. A softer rear sway bar reduces oversteer and adds understeer. You want to choose front and rear sway bars that work together to improve the overall balance of handling. Putting the wrong sway bar or sway bars on your 79-04 solid rear axle Mustang can make it handle much worse on an autocross course. Seventy-nine to 04 Mustangs came with many different front and rear sway bar sizes. Some left the factory without a rear sway bar. You can find OEM sway bar size guides online or you can use a digital caliper, an open-end wrench, or an adjustable wrench and a ruler 
to determine the size of your OEM sway bars. In general, 79 to 04 solid rear axle Mustangs were designed with a tendency to understeer. If your stock 79 to 04 solid rear axle Mustang has the factory installed tendency to understeer, a stiffer front sway bar will make that tendency worse. A stiffer front sway bar might feel great driving normally on the street, but when you push the car through tight, twisty elements on an autocross course, you'll realize the limit of front traction has been moved further in. The front tires will lose grip and the car will plow. Stiffer aftermarket sway bars are often sold in pairs. But here's the problem. Using a typical stock 79-04 solid rear axle Mustang GT as an example, installing the common 35mm front, 25mm rear sway bar combo without other mods that allow you to adjust for them will reduce body roll but the car will still have a tendency to understeer at the limit of traction. When you build an autocross Mustang, your goal is to move the limit of traction as far out as possible. Putting the correct sway bar in the correct location on the car is part of that process. Choosing the right sway bar or sway bars for your autocross Mustang depends on several things the tendency of the car to understeer or oversteer, the SCCA category you run in, the mods you've already made, and once you've defined a driving style, your personal preference, provided the car is faster. You have to know the tendency of your specific car at the limit of traction before you decide on a stiffer sway bar or sway bars. And you have to be sure that tendency isn't driver induced. Many people are quick to blame their car when it was actually their brake, throttle or steering input that made the car understeer or oversteer. The SCCA category you run in is important because you might not be able to change both sway bars. In street category, you can substitute, add or remove one sway bar. For most, but not all, solid rear axle 79-04 Mustangs competing in street category, adding oversteer with a stiffer rear sway bar will reduce the factory installed tendency to understeer and make the car's handling more neutral. For V8 cars, a 25mm rear sway bar is a good choice. I recommend using an OEM or aftermarket 23mm rear sway bar on four-cylinder and V6 street category Mustangs. In many SCCA categories, you can substitute, add, or remove any sway bar. But just because you can change both sway bars doesn't mean you should. Sway bars work in conjunction with your other suspension mods. Whether or not you'll see improved handling with a stiffer front sway bar depends on the mods allowed in your SCCA category, the mods you choose to make to your car within those rules, and your ability to adjust the suspension to make sure you're moving the limit of front traction further out and the overall limit of traction further out. Your sway bar bushing material and sway bar mount material impact the effectiveness of your front sway bar. Your front sway bar choice is also influenced by your alignment specs, spring rates and ride height, shock and strut settings, and ideal tire pressure. So despite what you'll commonly read in advertisements and online advice, improving your Fox Body or SN95 Mustang's handling isn't as simple as slapping on two stiffer sway bars. When people ask me how to choose sway bars for their 79-04 solid rear axle Mustang autocross cars, I give them these four tips. One, think of a stiffer front sway bar as a seasoning, not a main ingredient in your autocross suspension recipe. The front sway bar is the last suspension component I change on my autocross Mustangs. My cars are faster with a stiffer front sway bar but your car might be slower. Two, don't be afraid to try educated experiments. Sway bars are relatively inexpensive. 
If you know how to properly adjust your autocross suspension and you've defined your driving style, it's easy to determine if a stiffer sway bar or sway bars will make your Mustang more capable. 3. Don't let stiffer sway bars limit your ability to adjust the car. If you have to put your adjustable shocks and struts on the softest setting to compensate for your stiffer sway bars, you'll have no room to soften the shocks and struts on a tight course. Remember, no two autocross courses are the same. You don't want to run a setup that eliminates one of your crucial adjustment options. 4. Never throw away a sway bar. I have eight different sway bars in my Warhorse warehouse. They've all been on my autocross cars at some point, and they might go back on in the future. Having options on hand will help you as you search for your ideal setup. There's definitely much more you can learn about sway bars, but knowing the basics is a big benefit for beginners. Like many other mods, stiffer sway bars can make your autocross Mustang much better or much worse. Don't be swayed by size or stiffness. Selecting sway bars that work perfectly with all of your other suspension mods will make your horse flatter and faster out on course.